the colors that I'm using for this one, um, pink pirouette, rose red, and cherry cobbler. So that, those are my three, my three tones for this flower. And you can use one color and off stamp it, you know, three times for your lightest and then two times for your medium and then do it full force for your, for your darkest. So if you don't have access to a lot of different colors, that works as well. I really like using actual um, ink pads partly because I forget to off stamp them and what number I'm on. I find it just a little bit easier to use the colors and I like the depth and variety that it gives you to have the different colors. So that's the, my color combination here. Um, and I want my loop portion to not be the whole length of the card. So I'll just kind of figure where I want that. You're going to put a tail off the end of your of your hand and that's going to be one of these ends here. And then you will take the ribbon and you're just going to loop it around your hands. And you want three solid loops plus those two tails. So once you get to three loops you'll stop and then you'll just pinch that ribbon together and then you can hold it up since you don't have the, the finished sample to measure it to just hold it up to your curry and see if that goes about how it's pictured as far as width and length. And you're going to lose so, that line. You and if you do see a line, just keep working it. This is one of those things that it takes time. It's not quick. It's not like the Stampin' Write markers where you just color it and it's done. You're working this ink and really blending it, working to blend it. And another common mistake is that people think they've got to color the entire image. And sometimes you want to. But when you really want a nice, strong highlight in your image, like I did with this um, lemon, you're going to want to leave some space completely white in the middle. And then to get that white to blend, you're going to use your color lifter. And the color lifter, you're going to just use around the edge. You're not removing, the color lifter really, it says color lifter and it's kind of deceiving. It doesn't really remove color as much as it um, it reduces the color, the pigment strength a little bit. So when you use that on the on edges where you're trying to blend the color into white, it creates a much softer look so that you don't have any kind of harsh line going from the transition to the, your last color to the white space. It just it makes it so that it when you're using in. a brayer, you're going to um, roll your brayer in the ink pad back and forth and you want to make sure that you physically, when you get to the end of the pad, you lift up the brayer, go back to the beginning and pull it back down. What I, the mistake that I see a lot of people do with brayering is this, and they just roll it back and forth, back and forth in circles. And what's happening is you're only inking half of the brayer. You're not getting a full rotation of that brayer and it's not distributing the ink evenly around the whole brayer. So to get even ink distribution, here's the difference in sound. That versus this. Okay, and this is like a clicking, and that's what you want because you're going to be getting even ink distribution over the brayer, um, and you're inking up the full circumference of it. You're not doing just half of it. 